I think one of the annoying things about the aquarium hobby is there's just so much to learn. Like, why do these water test kits come with extra pads for pH, GH, and KH? Um, is this something I should care about? Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish here with practical tips for busy fish keepers like you. Meaning this is not going to be some super technical science lecture for PhD students. Instead, I want to talk about the practical things that actually matter to your aquarium fish. So let's get started. So let's just define these water chemistry terms. pH stands for power of hydrogen, meaning it's measuring the hydrogen ions in your water. And what that means is how acidic or basic is your water. Now, how much should you care? I don't really look at this number very much because most fish can live in like 6.5 to 8.0 pH. However, if you are breeding a certain kind of fish or keeping a really sensitive wild caught species, that might be a time when you need to pay attention. So uh, what I do is I just ask the breeder or the fish store where I got them from and find out if it's important or not for that species. KH stands for carbonate hardness, meaning it measures the carbonates and bicarbonates in your water. And practically speaking, it buffers your water and prevents your pH from dropping or changing sometimes at all. So how much should you care? Well, most fish can do fine in like four to eight degrees or 70 to 140 ppm. I'll put the conversion rate over here. Um, basically, as long as it's not too low, that's all we care about because if it's too low, sometimes your pH may rapidly change and that can be lethal to your fish. In my case, this is a number I also don't really look at. As long as my cage is above three degrees, I don't really care. Finally, GH stands for general hardness, which measures the calcium and magnesium in the water. Basically, how hard or soft is the water? And how much should you care? It's about the same as KH. Most fish can live in about four to eight degrees or 70 to 140 ppm GH. Um, however, you just don't want it too low because fish and plants need minerals to function. That's why some people have a hard time keeping aquariums when their house is on a water softener system that is stripping out all those minerals. Now, I know I may come off as pretty cavalier on how much water chemistry matters just because most people's water and most species, especially the hardy beginner ones, are going to fall within these ranges. However, if your tap water is way out of whack or when you're researching a species you want to keep, the internet, you know, Google says, yes, definitely keep the pH, GH, KH much lower or much higher than usual, then these numbers are going to become more important to you and probably should be something that you measure more often. Okay, everybody always wants to know, how do I change my pH, GH, and KH? Well, first of all, all the methods I'm going to recommend are generally speaking going to be gentler and also easy methods because if you use some of the more extreme techniques, sometimes A, you can easily accidentally kill your fish, and then B, they might be really, really time intensive. And for me, I'm a lazy fish keeper, so that's out the door for me. Now, I personally have really weird water. I have a high pH and really low GH and KH. So uh, I've got experience trying to lower my pH, GH, and KH, and it's pretty hard in my opinion. <laughs> so um, some things I've tried is aquariums tend to acidify or the pH tends to lower over time. And so one thing you can do is do minimal water changes, like try to avoid changing water as much as possible. Um, I have tried that method, but whenever I had to top off water that evaporated from the aquarium, I was tapping off topping off with my tap water, and that always raised my pH back to 8.0. So really, if I wanted that to be successful, I probably should have replaced it, the evaporated water with distilled water from my grocery store, but that was just like one step too much for me. <laughs> um, another method is to add like catapa leaves, driftwood, other botanicals that while they are breaking down in your aquarium, they actually release some really, really mild acids. And that method did work. I was actually successfully able to lower my 8.0 aquarium to like 7.6, 7.8. So not a lot, but I wasn't like cramming a ton of leaves in there. And so I'm sure if I had upped the ante, uh, I would have successfully kind of lowered that pH even more. 
There are a lot of companies that sell active substrates for plants or shrimp that promise to kind of lower that pH GHKH numbers. However, they're most effective if you're not constantly pouring in really basic water like mine into it. So kind of the final method is the most effective one, but the most time intensive one, which is to use RODI water, reverse osmosis deionized water. And you have to buy this like complicated looking filtration system, hook it up to your tap water. There's going to be a bunch of wastewater that's created and then the end product is this very very pure nothing in it water that you can slowly mix into your aquarium to lower all these numbers too much trouble for me if i wanted to do that i'd be keeping saltwater tanks but i'm here to keep freshwater tanks that i can just half fish in my normal tap water Me personally, I've had more success raising my pH, GH, and KH. For example, take a note from the book of African cichlid keepers because they are like experts at keeping high water chemistry values. And they will use things like aragonite sand or limestone and uh, dry rock that's intended for saltwater tanks. They'll use them as decorations and those all help keep things real high. I know Aquarium Co-op comes from really soft water land, so they used crushed coral either mixed in their substrate or in a little filter bag that they either put in their hang on back filter or canister filter and that helps to raise the kh especially me personally my gh is low enough that my plants actually start dying from lack of calcium and magnesium etc and so i regularly dose um seachem equilibrium to raise my gh and basically the mineral content in my aquariums once a week, I basically use my test strips to do like a quick and dirty measurement just to gut check mostly the nitrate level as well as the GH. So if I'm low on nitrate, I'm going to add a little easy green fertilizer for the plants. And then if I'm low on minerals, then some equilibrium also for the plants. <laughs> Honestly, I would just go with the lazy fish keeper method and keep the fish that match your water parameters, like your natural tap water. So if you have really soft water, low pH, go ahead and buy tons of discus, South American fish, crystal shrimp. I'm so jealous of you. However, if you have higher pH like me or hard water, then go for the African cichlids, keep the live bears. And then of course, there's a ton of fish in between that will you know, more or less live in both sides of the, the spectrum. So that's just my personal opinion. If you want to hear about the horror story where I tried to keep fish that were definitely mismatched in pH, here's that little disaster over there. Or if you're interested in part two of the series where I talk about whether or not nitrate is good or bad for your aquarium, I'm gonna drop it over here once it releases. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.